Let's see, how can we, yeah, it's doing pretty well. So uh, let's see, how can we um, trade or what strategies do we have to trade to you know start seeing some consistency? That's whether you're just starting out with trading or if you've been trading before, but there's always been, you know, like a big win and then a bunch of small losses or a bunch of small wins and then one big loss. But either way, it's just not profitable over the long term. And that's, by the way, not really your fault because that's the default. That's the default in the market and it has to be the case. So market makers, uh, you know, get their paycheck every single month so they can predict how much money they can make every single month. So what we'll be looking at is three strategies and then how market makers counter trade those strategies in order to uh, kick people out or, you know, make sure that the people trading those strategies lose. All right. So in order to do that, I will put away the scalper for now. Um, so we see the chart. There's still a bunch of indicators here, but we don't have to look at them. And let me go to a little bit of a higher time frame here. So, OK, so um, there's three strategies. First of all, why do we need a strategy? Well, it's one of the three pillars to consistency, right? Uh, number one is mindset, psychology. Number two is strategy, understanding what you're doing and having a, a, a bulletproof plan to do that. And number three is risk management. So how you manage that trade, how you manage that strategy and uh, risk in order to uh, make sure that over the long run, you're taking good deals and you're taking deals where it would be, it wouldn't make sense for you to be unprofitable over the long run. So those three things, right? Risk management, which we covered plenty, strategy, which we covered plenty, are also gonna be covering now. And then the mindset, which is something that we covered plenty, are also gonna be covering now. So. Okay, what are, what, what's strategy number one? Strategy number one is a very basic strategy and actually something that we're trading in the Discord mainly, which is a trend reversal strategy. And this is something that you know many of our strategies have been um, built uh, around that, um, around the you know, core market principle, but then also around the specific strategy. So uh, a trend reversal strategy essentially is that we're trading ranges. And we're trading ranges. Um, what that means is that uh, we're, when we go to the bottom of the range, we assume that the price will bounce up. When we go to the top of the range, we assume that the price will bounce down. When is the range an actual range? Well, once it establishes a bottom and touches it twice and touches the top twice, then we can say, okay, this is a range. And uh, from that point on, uh, we can trade it. Now there's bigger ranges and smaller ranges. You could argue that this in and of itself is a range on smaller time frames um, and then a higher time. So you have different ranges on different time frames. And really the the point of that is to um, in every single strategy, what is a strategy? It's a theory that you have in the market where you're saying that what you what you think will come true more often than it doesn't. And because that is the case, that is the edge that you have in the market. So how so? What do you do in order to increase that edge? In order to increase that edge, you can look at multiple confirmations that agree with your strategy, and you only enter when you're sure enough that you know the probability, at least, for your trades to come into fruition is high enough. For example, what we do a lot is to look at stochastics. So when we have a strategy, there's a trend reversal strategy, then just looking at this range, there would be longs and shorts, right? Every time at the bottom of the range, there is a long. Every time at the top of the range, there's a short. So every time we touch these levels, that is by definition a possible place where we can long and short. So uh, that's that's number one. And um, now the thing is that, you know, it can happen many times where, for example, here, where we have a trade and we're longing shorting, but then suddenly we break down low. What does that mean? Well, first of all, we need to be aware that that can happen in a strategy like this. And number two, you know, that in and of itself is another strategy that we'll be covering as well. So what is important here? Well, first of all, 
we need to understand when we make money and when we don't make money in a trend reversal strategy. In a trend reversal strategy, we make money when we bounce off of the top or bottom of a range, and we don't make money is if we continue or break out, right? So that you know, uh, that's why we have um, breakout strategies or trend following strategies, which are something else. So this strategy, the good part about it is that because the market usually works in ranges and goes from range to range more often than not, by default, you're going to be right. Like here, for example, in this range of Bitcoin, right, on the 30 minute, we've bounced off of this range every single time. Until we don't, right, so there's at, at some point, we'll either break to the, uh, to the downside or to the upside. That's a guarantee that it will happen at one point. We, we don't have to know to, to which side, but to one side. Right, so um, how do we increase the chance, right? We don't have to be right 100% of the time. We just need to have our clear edge. So how do we increase the chance that we're right? Well, we can look at other you know, indicators, timeframes, and, and confirmations that will support our thesis of we can long here or we cannot. So what we look at, usually what we love to look at in general is stochastics. So as, as we look at stochastics on different time frames, we will see that most of the stochastics are actually down and going up, which means for us that if that is the confirmation on multiple time frames, what that means is that from multiple, multiple perspectives, so essentially from multiple viewers of the market, they all coincide and agree of, on one thing. So that is an edge. And on top of that, we're at the bottom of the range. So that gives us the edge that we will probably bounce, and that's our trade. So that's one thing, strategy, right? The next thing is mindset. Well, first of all, we need to understand every single time we go into a trade and we expose risk, we expose our money into the market, there is someone out there to, to get it. There is someone, actually, there's many people that are trying to get that money. And they're trying to get that by trick you and make you do the wrong decision. And because you did the wrong decision, they can take your money. I can tell you exactly how that works right now. But in general, think of the market every time you go into a market. Think of it as, you know, you're, you're far out in the ocean and you jump in the water and you look deep down and it just blue and black eventually. And... You just, you know, in the middle of the ocean and there are sharks that are trying to get you. And every single moment you're in the market with exposed risk, right? So with the stop loss that can hit, so you're exposing some money to the market, you're basically dangling your feet in that water. So what you're trying to do is you're trying to minimize the time where you're dangling your feet in the water, but maximize the time where you can get the reward, right? So you really want to be on a boat fishing rather than being in the water yourself trying to catch small fish. Essentially, the boat is the vehicle, which is the strategy and the understanding of it, uh, if, that, if that analogy makes any sense. So what is important for us is that at any point in time, people are trying to mess with us and mess with the strategy. So what with our trend reversal strategy, what can happen, what can be good, what can be bad? So, you know, we're good if we enter and that's the exact place where we bounce and then we just go up, hit our TP at the top of the range and that's it. Beautiful. That happens, but it might also not. How are, you know, what are um, common ways that, uh, what are common things that can happen where your trade will go wrong? Well, first of all, when we trade a range, um, I actually, let me show link real quick because that's a range that, I've been looking at with other people for a while. So let me show you this range, right? It's like, like before, it's a normal range that we've been talking about. Um, and here we've been, you know, we touched it, went down, touched it, went down, touched it, went down. And then here we touched it, right? But then what happened? So, you know, someone, the average Joe would just probably put a short here and be like, hey, okay, like this happened if, like five times, probably gonna happen again. Well, guess what? Over the period of these three days, what was happening was, was that people were putting stop losses here all the time. So there's a lot of Joes here 
um, and sorry, by the way, if your name is Joe, it could be anyone. Uh, there's a lot of Joes here that put up stop losses to a point where the liquidity is actually really, really good. So if I'm a market maker and I want to trade this, I want to trade this short, what am I going to do? Well, the reason that, I'm, you know, that I need to trick retail traders is not because I'm a bad human being. It's because um, they literally hold the liquidity that I need in order to enter and exit trades because I trade with a lot of money. So what will happen is I know that at this level here, there's a lot of orders. There's a lot of buy orders. Why is there a lot of buy orders? Because there's stop losses of short sellers, right? So you enter a short means that you sell and to exit the short, you need to buy back. When you enter a long, you buy and when you exit a long, you sell it back, right? And in a short, it's the same thing, just the other way around. So there's a lot of buy orders here. So if I want to short, I need to sell someone that's willing to buy at this price. So what am I gonna do if I'm a market maker? I will set up millions of dollars of orders right here, right where the stop losses are, and then I will market buy to move the price and start triggering those stop losses and basically do an automatic transfer from the stop losses into my orders before I move the price down and hit my day profit levels. So these, basically, this level where people were putting stop losses all the time is essentially just, they were just preparing the plate for the shark to come here and pick up all the orders and make the profit. And the people that tried to short here got stopped out, like all the other people got stopped out uh, and the move actually happened, it happened without them and now they're just staring at their screen in a loss but um, you know the market maker made the money, and this happened twice. So we so we went higher. We hit the stop losses, and you know went down. You know hit some hit some take profit levels, and now people are like oh wow okay now they go back and they revenge trade. So they revenge trade, which means that they put their their uh, their order here. Uh, a little bit higher and they're like, okay, well, the top of this level where we spiked out, that's going to be my stop loss. Get, guess what happened? We spiked it again. And then people revenge traded again and guess what happened? They spiked it again. So, you know, this, at this point, it's just the market makers laughing at the people that traded this because you could have literally gotten stopped out three times and then hit the take profit level that, you know, you, you were right about it, but you didn't understand how the market worked and you got stopped out three times. So you could have, could have literally lost your account three times over here, whereas a market maker just made like a quick $20 million. So that's the difference. And that's what's important. So, so whenever we have a trend versus strategy, what is important for us to understand is that there can be movement further down, which should trick us into saying, okay, well, this is our trade and validation, but the, then the price will go further up. So how do we protect against it? We need to think like market makers do. So instead of, let's just assume here, I'm just going to put a long here. Uh, let's just assume that here's our, our long. We got a signal say here, right? This is actually the bottom of the range it was before before we moved further down. So, so you know, an average Joe would probably put their stop loss right here, which would have them stopped out. So instead of doing that, we can still enter here. But then we'll be like, okay, so what can happen, and usually before big moves happens every time because market makers need to enter and they need the liquidity to enter. So what are we going to do? Well, we need to expect that a move like that can happen and put our stop loss below that. You might argue, okay, but that's not that great because I'm risking a lot of money here. Yes, unless you trade like market makers do. Because what do market makers do? Well, we enter not with our full position, we enter with say 20, 30% of our position, and then we put in orders lower all the way to our stop loss they're supposed to get hit. And in case that happens, with, which by the way, usually happens, and because that happens, we will get, uh, the price will go down, our orders will be hit, and our average entry will actually be down here. 
So the, the result of that is a trade where we have an amazing entry, we have a much lower risk, and we took care of the stop loss hunt or the market makers trying to trick us and you know have us lose money so they can make money, right? We get on their side, don't get me wrong, we're not market makers, right? We don't, we don't do any of these moves, but we understand how the market moves. And because of that, we can anticipate things like this. And if they happen, instead of you know having a bad scenario and being stopped out, we have a good scenario and have an amazing entry and a great move. So that's, that's the difference between trading like a retail trader and trading like a market maker. So, so that's something that I wanted to show you. Now, uh, th that's strategy number one. So a trend reversal strategy where, um, where we're trading a range, essentially, and we're betting on the fact that we will reverse in that range. And as we reverse in that range, we look at other confirmations, that being stochastics or other indicators. You know, in the Discord, we, we have very, very specific strategies that people are very, very happy about. Um, and have had really good success. So, you know, there's plenty of that, but this is an example of a strategy. So about the alerts, by the way, this is the account that sends the, uh, all the alerts to the Discord. When we look at the scalper, love to see it on the five minute. Um, I just love to look at it and the trades. It's been doing really well today. And basically we just trade this literally the entire time. So, um, so then, and then again, in these scalper things, which is something that we will cover later on, but in these scalper things, um, when we implement the entries that we were talking about and the layering, then we get to a completely different level in profitability, which is insane. So that was besides the point. So number one is a trend reversal strategy. Now, what, what is another strategy? Number two is a trend following strategy. So we said that in the trend reverse strategy we make money when we bounce off of the range and we lose money when we break out of the range and continue higher well on a trend following strategy it's actually the exact opposite which is good so in a trend following strategy we make money when we break out and continue the move in a trend reversal strategy uh, and, and we lose money when we bounce off of a range and do not continue the move and go further down. So um, how do we trade that? Well, the way we trade it, here is a great example, is when we have confirmations and how does this happen? Okay, so now we get into a little bit more technical stuff, but when you have a trend following strategy, so this trade, right, could have been a range trade, but really what it was is a trend following it's a big trend and the price just moved to another range. So what happened here was that we had a big move here. So trend following strategies usually have a lower hit rate than trend reversal strategies. On a trend reversal strategy, you usually write most of the time. Uh, but on a trend following strategy, when you write, then you write big, which is, which is this, which is this big volatile move. It just might not happen all the time. So the beauty of this is though, that um, you might not see a range or the reason why the price went further down. But if you go onto higher time frames, then you will actually see that there are some, you know, confirmations and some, uh, some indications that the price is actually going to go further down. As we can see on the six hour, you know, being topped out, eight hour being topped out, 12 hour being topped out, and the daily being topped out and starting to go down and the weekly starting to go down. So obviously on those higher time frames, we can see that the chance that we will break a range and go further down is much higher. So, so a trend following strategy here, you know, bets on the fact that eventually we'll break out of a range. And you know, what that means is that it can happen that we enter say here, but um, it's going to take a while for us to break out. But as long as we know which way we break out, you know, based on other confirmations, uh, you know, that being also uh, stochastics or other indicators, then, you know, it will happen eventually. When does it not happen is when we break to the other direction, right? The, our entries ideally is, are going to be at the lower level. So the good part about this is again that usually we have multiple touches around those levels. So we have multiple times to enter. 
So here, especially, we don't have, you know, there's basically no excuse in having a great entry because we can layer in so many times. So when we layer in, say, say we enter here, right? And, you know, we know what can happen. We know this stop loss can be hunted. So we add in a bunch of layers of our orders. So, um, you know, this hits and we get a better entry here. Well, what happens is, you know, every single time we hit that level, we can just add in more layers and try to get our average order as high as possible. And when we get our average entry as high as possible, we'll have the best possible trade because, you know, in this situation, if you, if you did, you know, hit, um, if you did re, re, uh, reapply your orders and, you know, fill them every time, you would have a, you know, entry close to this, which would then mean that you basically didn't dangle your, your feet in the water at all, zero. So the time of exposure in your trade was pretty much zero, which is amazing. And that is something that we want because that is a good deal for us. So that's a trend following strategy. When does it not work is when we bounce and go the other way. Um, however, what can happen, which is something that did not happen here, but does happen often, is that whenever a big move starts, what will happen, once again, very similar to a trend reversal strategy, is that we will break to the upside before we have a big move to the downside. Actually, very similar to here. So here's the top of the range here. I'm sorry if there's too many, too many drawings. Here's the top of the range here, right? Top of the range. Guess how many stop losses there are here? A lot. So what happened is before we moved further down, what happened is we hit the top stop losses, got some liquidity, and then moved further down. What does that mean? What, what that means, I think it's pretty self-explanatory right now, is market makers need to get the liquidity in order to move. And most people that were actually shorting here, and correctly so, were stopped out before the move happened. And that is something that can happen over and over and over again. And that is why it's so crucial that we understand why the, how the market moves and why it moves that way in order to make sure that we're not one of those people and we understand what market makers do in order we, that we can trade uninterrupted for the market makers. Because essentially all of us are exit liquidity, right? We're still the small fish, even when you trade with 10 million, 20 million dollars in Bitcoin, that's literally nothing. So you're still exit liquidity or entry liquidity for the market makers. What you can do that was playing it smart and understanding how the market works. And because of that, you'll be on the same side as the market makers rather than they're, you know, fish in the sea or you dang dangling your feet until a shark comes and pulls you down, which is something that people do over and over and over and over again. And um, uh, so, yeah, that's number two. And number three, a strategy that you can trade is essentially a similar strategy, but there's a different time frames that you can trade it with. So there's, you know, higher time frames, which, you know, for example, would be our dashboards, which I can just check out real quick. And our dashboards, let me just go to the bundles to show it uh, quicker. Um, on the dashboards, you have strategies that take a long time, right? Well, long time. It takes a longer time and the trades take, you know, a week or two weeks or, you know, there's one or two trades every single trade and uh, every single week. And uh, because of that, the result of that is consistent results, but they're slower trades. It's, you know, all of them are somehow based off of other trend reversal, trend following strategies and using stochastics and other indicators in order to trade. But they're just on different coins and have different variations of them. You know, here we have like nine strategies. So there are different variations. However, what that means is that um, we have, uh, we're trading them on a higher time frame, which then, you know, shows you different moves. And another thing is that you can go to lower time frames, say the five minute, which is, for example, the indicator or the scalper that, that we just uh, published, which is doing pretty well. Um, and you know, you can see there's a lot of trades here. And as we increase this, 
like in the ranges, we're trading the ranges here. And um, essentially it is based on the scalping strategy that we have in the Discord um, that also uh, Hubert was trading and you know, very similar situation. So, uh, and this is something that we can still confirm. Obviously we don't wanna trade it in big moves, but whenever we're ranging, we can literally just you know, turn this thing on and uh, trade it for a day, two days, three days, as long as we're ranging and just make a lot of, um, you know, profits at the zone of five minutes. So when, when looking at the one minute, then, you know, there's plenty of time to do that. So this like a scalping strategy or taking a strategy that already works and applying it to a different time frame will help you to, you know, number one, the, the, what is the advantage of a strategy like this? Well, you're trading smaller moves, right? So probably higher leverage, but um, you, there's a lot of trades and you would not risk 10% per trade, which we usually do, you would risk much less, but there's much more trades. So you get the compounding effect, not once a day, but you get it 20 times a day. So as long as you're consistent in trading it, which comes back to the risk management portion and psychology mindset pro portion of the pillars, right? Strategy is one thing, you need to have all three. As long as you have that and you trade it consistently, then you will, exponentially grow your account so many more times because you get much more flips or like, you know, much more compounding tries. So, so that is the advantage of that. The advantage of slower strategies uh, like the dashboards is that um, you do not have to spend that much time and mental energy on doing that, but the results are still there. Now, how can on a small, you know, scale, how can market makers mess around with the price? Actually, um, on larger uh, market cap coins or, or pairs, it's, you know, Forex, for example, it's much, much harder to do because it takes a lot of liquidity to do that. So, you know, on Bitcoin, for example, moving to, to a, you know, uh, a wick and, you know, hit stop losses um, is harder to do, first of all. Second of all, um, when we trade it, we trade with a smaller amount. So, you know, when we get 20 good trades and one bad trade and that one bad trade, you know, cancels out one good trade, then we're still, you know, plenty of profits. But because you have so many tries, um, one bad trade is just a drop in a bucket. It doesn't really make a difference. On a higher level time frames. What can market makers do? Well, now it's much harder to do it again because the time frame is so long that you know instead of doing impulses and market buying, market selling into liquidity pockets, um, you know which will get corrected relatively quickly in the market. Market makers cannot do that on a large time frame because it would take billions of dollars to do that. So, so by you know doing a larger time frame you're protected as well the best thing the best setup that you can have and you know it might take some time and guidance to get there is to have a trend one trend reversal strategy one trend following strategy because those are negatively correlated meaning that when one isn't working the other one is right on a trend reversal strategy if we break out of a range then we're losing however on a trend following strategy, that's exactly when we're making money. So they're negatively correlated. Then have, which are midterm, then have a scalping strategy that can run either on, on autopilot or, you know, on manual trading whenever you have the time, which is something that uh, basically is a higher frequency of trading. So you can always uh, enter and exit and you don't have to wait for entries that long. And then in the background, you have longer term strategies that don't need that much attention, but are much more safe and secure. And that way, the profits that we make from the higher intensity stuff, we can put to the lower intensity stuff and still profit off of that. So the money isn't laying somewhere, not, you know, not making any money. And because of that, you know, you have, you know, four horses in a race, every horse is different two horses are negatively correlated. And because of that, you are distributing your risk enough so the overall equity curve of your account is gonna be as straight as possible. 
right? This is an extremely straight line. And then, you know, obviously we have a little bit of a pump here. That's because Phantom and Solana took off. Um, but, you know, other than that, it would be a pretty straight line, which means that, and over, you know, over a period of multiple years, which means that um, the predictability of the strategy or the bundle is very, very high. And it's managed very well because there's not a lot of volatility and there's, you know, it's there's a predictable range of how much profit it's going to make over a period of time. And that is essentially what you want. That comes down to how you can be consistent. As long as you figured out the strategy, you have the mindset and you know and understand the risk management of the market, as long as those rules are laid out for you and you understand them and you follow them, now all you have to do is have the mindset to follow them every single day. And as you follow them every single day, the outcome is predictable, right? You want to eliminate volatility in the market or in the way that you trade. And because you do that, you eliminate volatility and you increase predictability. And because of that, that is exactly the way on how you can make predictable and consistent money in the market. So basically everything we talk about is one of those three pillars, right? It's either mindset or it's the strategy or it's the risk management. And all three things, you need all three pillars. And as you have all three things together, you have consistency. And that consistency is the holy grail of trading. It's actually not profitability. It's actually not how big of a trade you did. It's how consistent you are because that and only that predicts how much money you will make over a period of time. Everything other than consistency is gambling. No institution, no institutional trader, no market maker is gambling. They have a predictable return rate or range because they have consistency and because they have predictability. So that is the main thing that we need to focus on. And as we, you know, do those, like, first of all, you need a strategy. We give you a strategy. Then you need the mindset. There's hours of mindset training. Then you need risk management. There's hours of risk management training. And depending on the person, you know, who lacks what, we can help and give the specific information. And overall, as you increase all three pillars and even them out, then your consistency will start increasing a lot. And then you're like, oh, it's actually possible to make money in the market. I wasn't crazy after all. But, you know, the information that's needed and the work that's needed is very specific. It's not about figuring out this super complicated indicator or something. It's not rocket science. It's not complicated. You don't have to be a genius to do that, right? You just need to understand the actual information because there is so much misinformation around it because what people tend to do, that's human psychology, what people tend to do if they don't understand it is they overcomplicate it to a point where they can explain it to themselves. But that's not the point. So, you know, a good rule of thumb is that when someone's talking to you and they give you this crazy theory about the market and, you know, that's what, how they're going to make millions of dollars, take it with a grain of salt. It's simple. They're simple strategies. There's nothing crazy about them. But you need to understand how the market works. You need to understand who is making the moves, who's making the money in the market. And you need to... When they say roll over and bark, you roll over and bark, but you feed on crumbs and those crumbs are hundreds of millions of dollars. So you'll be fine to a point where, you know, when you actually start trading with enough money, but that is you know, something that most people don't even want to do. You don't want that responsibility. So, um, so understanding that, having the right mindset, understanding the psychology of it, uh, having the strategy and then being able to look at a trade that's live trading and not doing something stupid, something that you should, obviously you know they shouldn't be doing, but the emotional triggers of the market trigger you in order to do that. So you don't want to do that either. Right? And that's all. So those are three strategies that you can do. Um, there's also those three strategies. I told you how market makers can counter trade you. So that's something important to to look at how do you, you know, avoid that? You avoid that by making sure that you layer your entries and you 
expect the fact or anticipate the fact that then can happen and if it does happen that you should come out um, as at an advantage and not at a disadvantage you shouldn't be able to tolerate it you should be able to use that because that's what market makers do so um, there's that and um, yeah I think uh, I think that's actually everything that I wanted to cover uh, right now um, and um, yeah, layering your stop, right? And actually, in order what I do, let me just say this one last thing before I, uh, before I finish up here. So when you layer your entry, right? You layer your stop. Well, so first of all, you move your stop higher than other people, obviously, counterintuitive, but you know, if you think about it, actually makes sense. And wherever the people have your stop losses, you have your entries because those are your best possible entries you can ever have. And it's a discount. You should be grateful that that happens because that's what market makers do. And then at your stop loss, what I usually do is right before my stop loss, I put in a juicy entry because if this hits and I don't get stopped out, then I literally have the best entry I could theoretically have in this trade. And the risk on this amount that I enter is a tiny fraction of, you know, anything else that I enter lower here. So this is literally statistically the best entry and risk to reward you can possibly have. I mean, look at it. So right now our risk to reward is pretty high. It's a 4.5, right? Now look at this. Look, keep looking at the risk to reward as I start going higher. It's exponential. It's a 51. <laughs> the risk reward is 51 to 8. So when you hit an order that's right about the stop loss, which by the way helps because that order actually, um, you know, acts li like a block to that stop loss because the market has to go through your order and eat up the liquidity before it hits that stop loss. Um, and your risk to reward statistically becomes exponentially higher. It's a 51.8. 51. So for every dollar that you risk, you get $50 back. $50, 50 back. So yeah, that's something uh, very, very important. So um, yeah, that's all. That's all I wanted to cover. I think that um, it was enough value for one call, one video. Um, if you guys any have any questions, let me know. Um, there's a lot of great stuff coming in the Discord. I'm very, very happy. For whoever's watching on YouTube, make sure you go into the Discord. Um, for whoever doesn't have an affiliate link, make sure you make an affiliate link uh, because that was, will help you a lot too. And um, yeah, there's great stuff coming. Uh, you will be mind blown over a couple things that we'll release in the next couple of days. And other than that, um, I'm happy you guys um, joined and I hope you learned something and yeah, that's it. And I'll see you guys in the Discord.